in that analysis review of season two, episode 10. Hopefully he can tell us what's going on with Satella. <laughs> At this point, guys, you should no longer have any doubts about ReZero Season 2. Even the dialogue- <laughs> That what? It's the perfect anime? It's another 10 out of 10 episode? ...heavy setup episodes like this one are more captivating than anything else that's currently airing. Glaze. No disrespect to Snafu, but Glaze. ReZero really does belong in a tier of its own. Last episode, Satella, our beloved Yandere, made a surprise guest appearance and started killing everyone in the sanctuary. Mm. I didn't want to spoil it last week, but it seems that a lot of anime onlys in the comment section actually understood what was happening, even though it wasn't directly explained, which is... Let's see. Well, no shit, of course it's because he's with Echidna. It's literally just having the phone turned off and him partying somewhere else and, and then mom calling and not picking up. It's basically that. What I want to know is... Did Amelia's body get possessed, or is this Satella's flesh here? It's very nice to see. The most popular theory was that Satella got angry at Subaru for talking about return by death, but she yeah. couldn't reach him inside the tea party, so to punish him, she possessed Amelia instead. That's what it seems like, right? That, so, everything before the possession I agree with, but the possession part I think is a little ambiguous. Satella is the Witch of Envy, also known as the Jealous Witch, and judging by her reaction when Subaru shows interest in the other witches, it's pretty clear that Satella is in fact jealous. Mm -hmm. And it seems like last episode, Dona knew this would happen, so she imbued Petra's handkerchief with her power so that Subaru could she use it as a weapon. It. Subaru realizes this and then kills himself with the handkerchief. Wait, maybe we shouldn't have killed herself. Maybe we should have stabbed Satella instead. Did Echidna mean for us to use the knife to end ourselves to loop? Probably. Most likely. 99% yeah. But what if there was a different meaning? What if there's a possibility that this is the one moment that you could have killed Satella? The handkerchief resulting in a pained reaction from Satella. So why did Subaru kill himself if Satella was gonna kill him anyway? Well- We don't know that. It seems like this is like an infinite thing that's never going to end, right? Satella wasn't gonna kill him. That's the last thing Satella wants to do to Subaru. He's gonna kill him anyway. Well, Satella was actually keeping Subaru alive to tell him that she loves him. When he was engulfed by her- Yeah, love me, love me, love me, play- Un Until we admit that, this probably would never end. And even if we admit it, she probably keep saying, yeah, say it more and more. Her shadows, his consciousness actually started combining with that of all of her other victims. It was a very unpleasant experience. That's why Satella was so shocked when Subaru killed himself. She gets upset when Subaru talks about his power. She gets jealous when he talks about other women. And she mm -hmm. gets heartbroken when she sees him in pain. Now, yep. if that's not a yandere, then I don't know what is. This opening scene was a perfect example of how to properly use your budget. The animation was phenomenal, and it was directed very nicely with some really amazing shots. Once again, ReZero Season 2 continues 10 out of to 10. impress me episode after episode. 16 out there of 10. There was another big reveal at the beginning that I want to talk about, and the opening might have already spoiled this for you, but there are a lot more lollies this season than we pre- Kamikaze lollies, and yes. Not just, like, the amount of reuses. Yeah, there's a lot of lollies, but it's still one character, right? But, like, Tifone, Gluttony, Biko already was a lolly. Subaru is literally becoming a lolly master. He is. Petra's... Is Petra a lolly? I think a lolly isn't really about age and more like their body type and how, like... It looks, right? <sighs> She's definitely on the... Upper boundaries of what a lolly is. A lot more lollies this season than we previously thought, and it's got me wondering: Does Re Zero need more lollies? I think we're gonna keep getting more lollies at this rate. Yes. And if so, how many lollies does Re Zero need? An unlimited amount. Billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions. Let's be honest. What's the point of a lolly if Jesus. it's wearing clothes, right? Subaru. What's the point of a lolly if it's wearing clothes? Four years ago. Wow, man, Echidna's just fucking wildin' out there. He finds a naked lolly called Ryuzu Mayor trapped in- Yeah, yeah in, in the light novel too, right? It had clothes. In the anime, they removed it. Inside a crystal. He learns that- Oh, was that a Bakemonogatari reference? Got it, got it, got it. 400 years ago, the original purpose of the sanctuary was to serve as an experimental Kurumi. facility operated by the Witch of Greed. That's right. All the Ryuzus we've seen thus far have been clones of the original. 
The witch created an army of these clones to use in her experiments and was able to transfer memories into the empty clone bodies. The Witch of Greed was researching immortality. Yep. She's done things to regret, right? Who has done things she regrets? So maybe this is the specific example. But she wasn't able to fit her own memories inside the clones because their souls weren't large enough to That's hold right. everything. It's like if you poured gallons and gallons of tea into a little... The Odo. The too small, bro. The artificial Odo. Echidna? 3,000 tera giga mega bullshit bites. And the container? Too small. But now we know that she can compress it all into one single juice, but we don't... We can't try that. But she sealed away. Little teacup. Obviously, this would result in the tea spilling all over the place and you'd have a lot of cleaning to do. This bit of information was cut from the web novel, but the first Ryuzu experiment was a complete failure and the clone actually went insane and became extremely dangerous. Oh. After further testing, though, the witch experimented with methods of reducing the size of a soul to allow her to fit her own soul into the clone's bodies. However, before she could finish the experiment, she was interrupted by Satella. Yep. Anyway, Ryuzu calls Subaru the Apostle of Greed, which is a title that refers to someone with full control of all of the Ryuzu clones. That's pretty cool, huh? Apostle of Greed. Because we have ingested Satala's things, like the tea, right? Body fluids. Now we can control these Ryuzus too. But does this extend beyond just Echidna? Like, the reason we can control these clones is because they're basically failed copies during Echidna's experimentations. Anything in Echidna's, like, authority, I guess, under her jurisdiction, whatever related to her, we can kind of control now. Let's apply that concept to Satala. Now, I don't know if we're an apostle of envy or not. No, I I'm just, just fucking randomly theorizing, but is there potential that they might have kissed, but the memories are gone? You know? Is there any chance that, like, Satala and... Subaru kissed, but, and ingested some sort of saliva, but the memories were gone, and now we secretly do have Apostle of Envy, and then what would that do? Control what? I don't know. I'm just trying to fucking think of potential shit with Satsala, because there's a lot of bits with there that seems to be just erased. The purpose of the witch's body fluids were to stabilize the sloth factor inside of Subaru's body, but in addition, it secretly made him the mm -hmm. Apostle of Greed. So now Subaru can order the clones around and make them do whatever he wants. Yep. It's basically every Lollicon's dream come true. Brother, you know what a date is. I've seen you specifically describe what a date is in season one about how two people in love could end up doing something in the heat of the moment. Like, <laughs> and he's just, all right, first date. <laughs> okay. We All get right. a nice heartwarming moment with Amelia, who's really sad that Puck isn't here to support her, but luckily Subaru intervenes and gives her the courage she needs to continue. E it's then revealed that Otto and Subaru sleep together side- Yeah, they do. Otto might be the best waifu this season. There was an interesting moment here, though, with the whole fairy thing, right? Amelia Tan, Mega Fairy! And then, in the world of Reef Zero, what are fairies? They're like, evil spirits or some shit, right? to continue. It's then revealed that Otto and Subaru sleep together side by side. You want the mm -hmm. numbers, Mason. That's all we've ever wanted. He wants to be the dad. And yes, this confirms that Otto does want Subaru to call him daddy. On his way to the mansion, Subaru's interrupted by Garfield, but this time Subaru's a lot more prepared and, dare I say, badass. Garfield accuses him of having no idea what pain and suffering are. Garfield has no clue. This bluff moment was amazing. And Subaru obviously corrects him, saying, I seen This dialogue him. gave me chills, and it looks like Garfield had the same reaction. Mm -hmm. I think being able to speak openly about Return by Death changed Subaru a lot and made him more comfortable with using his ability. Finally, Subaru is ready. The Echidna buff, bro. ...to take on the challenges this arc has presented him, and he's determined to endure all the suffering required to protect those he cares about. Subaru, more... Remember, the Uniter 
six stars, six witches, six witch factors. I don't know. Within a car company. So it looks like in the anime, Garfield is just kind of shook by Subaru's words and decides to back off. But in the web novel, the scene was a little different. Garfield actually tries to attack him, but Subaru just snaps his fingers. And then what? all the Ryuzu clones emerge from the forest what? and restrain Garfield while Subaru. No, why didn't they show us that? Are you serious? That's an amazing scene. He fucking made the kamikaze lolly bombers to like prevent Garfield from doing it. What the hell? Subaru escapes. After learning that Subaru took control of the clones, Garfield felt betrayed and let out an <laughs> agonized cry that echoed throughout the forest. <laughs> we took all your lollies, Garfield. It was a really intense moment, but I understand why they cut it. <laughs> why? Why would they cut it? Uh, it's cut from the light novel, and, the, and then the light novel is the actual canon. Um. I don't know exactly how it works. There's a lot of people that just cap in the comment section and says that, well, the main source material is the light novel, but then other people are saying, and then, and, then they, they, and then they just refute web novel content as being important, and other people say, no, no, they're both important. Anyways, I would have, regardless of that, I would have loved to see Super recommend an army of kamikaze lollies and <laughs> prevent Garfield from fucking attacking and have like a mental breakdown too. This episode was already extended by a couple minutes, and they really wanted to end with that Beatrice cliffhanger, so mm -hmm. they had to cut a lot of things. This is a very interesting scene, though. You're finally here, I suppose, right? But we're so early here. Last time we saw her, it was way later. Now she's saying, you're finally here. Now, maybe she would have said the same thing at a different time, too, but this is making me like think, like, hmm. I wonder if the grimoire is like changing the script based on Subaru's like different loops and what he learns. Yep, Subaru arrives at the mansion and we get another weekly- Like think about that, right? A grimoire is supposed to tell you the actual past to the future. But the future- But with the- Assuming that you have one timeline, that's a bit more consistent, you know? Like you have one loop, one timeline, and you can predict the future, sure. But with a character like Subaru in the, in the, as a variable, that's just like fucking everything up by just repeatedly looping, looping, and trying different shit. The grimoire must be adapting according to it, or even like listing the different loops as potential options and playing with it. I don't know. I want to know more about this, though. Thanks. Yep, Subaru arrives at the mansion, and we get another weekly dose of those sweet, sweet cliffhangers. At last, Subaru approaches Beatrice, but this time with a different attitude than I normal. am the one. She starts saying a bunch of crazy dialogue that seems to imply that contract. something big's about to happen. Seems like Subaru is the one that's going to be ending this contract as a bounded, like, Biko here for whatever reason, and... Rosso seems to imply that Biko has been waiting for a certain somebody. And there's some level of irony here, right? Biko said that, how ironic, that the person that's gonna like free me is you. And why would that be ironic? Because Biko herself has helped Subaru before, and now Subaru is the one helping Biko? I, I don't know. I think what triggered this reaction from Beatrice was the nature of Subaru's demeanor. Normally, he's all goofy and annoying, but this time he's dead serious, and I mm. think Beatrice understood what that meant. Okay. Now, we'll obviously get some more information next episode, but for now, feel free to leave your Ironic. theories in the comment section below, and novel readers, please try not to spoil it for the anime onlys. It looks like Subaru finally has the resolve needed to overcome all these obstacles, and I guess defending the mansion is his first objective. All if right. Subaru can convince Beatrice to help him, then that would give him a tremendous advantage, but the problem is, we still aren't even sure if Beatrice is a villain or not. Roswell said- I don't think Beatrice is a villain. I think we can trust Beatrice. It just seems very ambiguous right now due to the grimoire and her mystery. And, and uh, after the conversation, I think it's going to be fine. I refuse to believe Beatrice is a villain or an antagonist. She's not even part of the witch's cult. Said she isn't a witch cultist, but can we really trust him? Let me know what you guys think. I, I genuinely do think that we can trust Roswell. Simply due to his own selfishness and his own goals, which aligns exactly with Subaru's goals, right? It's in his best interest to help Subaru steer to the right path and overcome the challenges. Even if he sets up the challenges and it may seem fucked up, I do believe that Roswell's best interest is our best interest right now. 
I know some novel readers are going to feel like this episode was a bit rushed, but after looking at it with an open mind from the perspective of an anime only, I think the pacing was pretty good, especially when considering they had to adapt a lot more material than usual for this episode. I thought Subaru really shined in this episode, and it's been an astounding experience watching him grow. His yeah. lowest points existed to allow episodes like this to defy them. This episode showed us not only how badass Subaru can be, but also how far he's come to get to this point. Yep. Oh, I almost forgot. This what? is another 10 out of 10 episode. No, 16 out of 10 episode. Two. Thanks everyone for watching. And there's the video. Guys, please go give Mr. Kidney a like on the channel video. Check out his channel if you haven't. And I will see you next time.